All right, everyone. I am joined by a very special guest today. I have the pleasure of speaking with Nick Picard. He's the portfolio manager at Horizons ETFs, a big ETF company in Canada that I've been wanting to speak to for a very long time. So, Nick, um, welcome, welcome to the the channel, and glad you could uh, you know take the time to to speak with me today about your your products. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Perfect. So. Um, Nick, as you know, my channel, my, you know, my, my strategy, my personal portfolio really revolves around the covered call strategy, covered call ETFs, which Canada has, you know, a few big players. Um, Horizons is definitely one of them for sure. And, uh, the first question I like, I, I like to ask all the different portfolio managers is about, uh, your specific covered call strategy. So as we know, when it comes to covered call strategies, there's really two major things we need to look at the portfolio coverage, the option moneyness, right? Every, every manager has kind of a different strategy. So tell me a little bit about Horizon's uh, strategy when it comes to your covered call ETFs, which you have seven total and we'll discuss a few, few of them uh, a little later. So tell me about the Horizon's covered call strategy. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're asking the question because there are definitely kind of of thought in the in the cover call uh, overlay world. And as you mentioned, the, 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 one of the strategies is to sell kind of at the money options to maximize the amount of uh, income you're getting for those options. And maybe that allows you to write a little bit less of the portfolio. And then there's another strategy, which is to write a little bit more but you know, further out of the money options to kind of re, you know get more upside potential on your portfolio. And there is no right answer. And what we do at Horizons is because we use an active covered call overlay, mm -hmm. we can switch between writing a little bit less. And we usually write between 25 and 50% of the portfolio. So we can choose to write a little bit less, a little bit closer to the money, although we generally tend not to write at the money options. And or we could write a little bit more closer to 50%, but then we could go a little bit further out of the money. And what we found through all our uh, research and from having to uh, you know trade these portfolios over the years is that different environments are better for different types of strategies. Yeah, I mean, so so basically, I, I'm hearing that it's a dynamic approach. It's not a systematic approach or a set in stone approach where I'm always going to write uh, you know 50 percent of the portfolio, always four percent out of the money. So you guys are you know constantly trying to decide or trying to. I'm assuming to uh, you know the decisions you're taking in terms of moneyness coverages to maximize total return is that your number one objective for these funds? That, absolutely, that is okay. our. our our objective is really to kind of, you know, as you know, with cover calls, sometimes there's a risk of not getting enough upside participation because, you know, you get called away on, on the on the call uh, in a big bull market. And so we're cognizant of that. Uh, and that's why we don't write more than 50% generally, because we, we want to make sure that we maintain some upside on the portfolio. But but also, uh, you know, we, we're cognizant that, you know, people buy these cover calls because they want income. And so we, there is, you know, we do want to generate enough uh, yield uh, on our portfolios. Perfect. Thanks. That makes perfect sense to me. So um, you guys have a total of seven covered call ETFs. We'll talk about a few of the more unique ones today. And you guys just recently refreshed your entire lineup. Uh, the symbols changed. A lot of them stayed the same. Uh, but one that I really want to focus on, and I think it's probably a great time for this one, is QQCC. So QQCC, this is the NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF. So uh, kind of very similar to what uh, QILD does, right, on the uh, from Global X, which is a sister company, uh, by the way, in case my viewers don't know, of Horizons ETFs. It's all under Murray Asset Management. Sorry about the noise, by the way. There's some construction going on here. So um, QQCC, so this, you guys actually transitioned uh, your global, or I think it was an international covered call ETF called HEJ, and you switched it to QQCC. Tell, tell me a little bit about the transition, why you guys decided to do that instead of just starting a new ETF. Well, it's, it's important. We, when we looked at our covered call lineup, we, we realized that perhaps uh, we needed to uh, simplify uh, you know, the, our offering. And so uh, we had um, equity baskets uh, that were international, that was HEJ, and it wasn't just that much demand for, for those stocks, uh, for covered call on that strategy. But uh, we, you know, we certainly know that people want their technology names. There's a lot of volatility in the sector. Um, you know, uh, our sister company uh, has QILD, and that's been a very uh, successful ETF. And so we thought there was a need to do a similar ETF in Canada for Canadian investors. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, I hear this all the time from multiple fund managers, um, international stocks, especially non US, yeah, e even Canada, the option market is very small, very limited. So it's, it's a bit harder to generate those premiums. The easiest thing to generate premiums is the higher volatility stuff in the US, exactly like the NASDAQ and the technology stocks. So um, yeah, it makes complete sense to me. So if just my because I you know I was just a tad confused about this, but uh, now I understand. So basically, if you're looking at the past performance of QQCC, the ten year, the five year, this includes the basically HEJ and not the transition which occurred, I believe, in mid June. Uh, uh, yeah, towards the end of June, I believe it was towards the end of June, um, and that's important to know. You know, when you're looking at the performance of the ETF, uh, you kind of have to look at the performance since the change from one mandate to the new mandate right. that happened at the end of June of of, uh, of this year. And so if you look at the performance from, say, June 30th all the way to today, it, it tracks the, the NASDAQ uh, 100 uh, fairly closely and, in fact, has, has outperformed. So, you know, we're very happy with how things have started. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I was very impressed when I saw the yields, the consistent, very high distributions, which, of course, is much easier to do or generate when there's higher volatility. But, um, you know, even though these, you know, we're talking 12, 13 percent yield here on QQCC, this is it's not a leveraged product or anything like that. It's it's extremely uh, your uh, like we discussed before. It's not like you're writing at the money. It's not like a QILD. So let, let's do the comparison. So how would you compare QQCC? Uh, to QILD in terms of strategy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think a, a more fair comparison is to compare uh, QQCC to QILG because, you know, because we're only writing up to 50% of the portfolio, uh, you know, uh, we don't, we're not writing 100%. And so we're not, we're not writing, you know, as much uh, compared to QILD. Um, but despite, you know, despite that, and despite the fact that we've been in a bear market, um, because we have better upside capture in our active strategy, we've actually managed to outperform um, uh, both those funds so far. But at the end of the day, you know, it's similar in terms of, you know, what we're trying to achieve. We're trying mm -hmm. to achieve some growth. And so it's comparable, I would say, to, to the QIL, you know, to QILG in the U.S. Yeah. So in case so, my viewers don't know, uh, QILD does 100% uh, coverage at the money. QILG does 50% coverage. So less aggressive with the, or less coverage. So which means you have a lot of uh, you have more upside participation, but you also have the, the the rich premiums. Of course, not as much as the QILD one. So yeah, I, I think that's very interesting. It's definitely the ETF that stood out to me in your lineup as unique because now we actually have a Canadian version or a Canadian option. Uh, instead of QILD. So QILD is always kind of a bit of a pain if you're putting it in your TFSA in your cash account because there's that withholding tax. But now with QQCC, it's Canadian listed. So, you know, it's it's a great option. So um, a really, really cool ETF, great option, which I suggest my viewers to uh, keep an eye on. Uh, I, I certainly haven't been very impressed with, you know, not only the distributions, but the consistency of them too. And like you said, out, the outperformance of the index. Um, so yeah, one of the things I, I, one of the things I could add about that as well is, you know, because it's listed in Canadian dollars on yeah. the, you know, on the exchange, you don't have to switch your money to us dollars. You can just buy it with, with your, your existing Canadian, uh, you know, cash account. And, and I mean, the other thing is a lot of people, when they look at these cover calls, they're, they're looking at the, the 12 month yields. I, I would urge people to look at, you know, uh, the more recent indicated yields that we have on these cover calls, because we had all these uh, mandates, which is, uh, you know, it's it's you know I believe that uh, the more recent uh, distributions are more indicative uh, of what we can expect going forward if we remain in this kind of volatility environment, which is which is a, a fairly high volatility environment. Yeah, I, I noticed it right away. You you see the as soon as June July start, there's a big jump, and you actually see the the QQCC distribution. So don't forget, you know, I'm talking to my viewers here. If you're looking, you know, last year and the years before, that's really was the HEJ distribution so really start looking at them starting from july i would say like, like you're saying would be a bit more accurate so yeah really cool etf um really good option for canadians who like that qild but don't want to deal like you said with the exchange with the withholding taxes as well so very very interesting speaking of interesting the other one that that has always stood out to me is the hgy so this is one where you guys have the only one where you haven't renamed so this is basically an etf that holds uh, physical gold or another ETF, which is basically physical gold, and you're doing covered calls on it. I found that was very interesting, very, very unique. 
um, you know, I'm always an income oriented, oriented investor. So this is kind of like you're owning gold, but you're getting some option premiums out of it too, about six, six, seven percent yield, which is really, really good. So what made you guys come up with this, in my opinion, very unique and great idea? Well, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of cover call mandates that you see in the market today, they're really focused on, um, you know, income with uh, dividend stocks and adding a cover call overlay to to improve on that income. But what we notice is that there's a lot of adv advisors and a lot of investors who who really want to keep their current asset allocation, mm. uh, but they need they just need more income from that asset allocation. Uh, you know, and that's why we launched QQCC for people who like tech stocks. That's why we have the TSX 60 cover call with CNCC and gold is a perfect example. Gold doesn't pay any income, right. but, but, you know, studies show that it's always useful to have a little bit of an allocation to gold as a diversifier for, you know, in your overall uh, portfolio allocation. So this is a way for an investor to own some gold, but still get paid some income from owning that uh, gold exposure. Yeah, I thought it was very unique. And I talked to a lot of people who, you know, they're more old school. They're typically older investors. They always have five, 10% in gold. Some of them have gold bars at home or gold coins. I say, just get HGY instead, such a much greater option. You don't have to worry about, you know, people stealing it or the government stealing it or whatever you want to say. You just have it as an ETF. You get a month. Once again, uh, by the way, this, this goes for all your covered call ETFs. They're all monthly distributions, right? That's correct. Yeah, all, I mean, all uh, monthly. Yeah, all monthly distributions, you get a nice, you know, six, usually it's about six, seven percent yield on, on HGY. Um, I found that was very interesting. And if you are someone who likes to have, you know, five, 10 percent in gold, great alternative. So thanks for that. Really appreciate it. Now, um, next question I have is more of a generalized question regarding management fees. So, you know, management fees, MERs um, gets a lot of attention, in my opinion, more than they should. That's just my personal opinion, but I get I get these questions all the time. So the MERs on the horizons covered call ETFs, I noticed that there may be a tad higher, maybe like five, 10, 15 basis points higher than a lot of competitors. Uh, so what, what, you know, what goes into these management fees? How would you respond from viewers that say, hey, your management fees are a, a little bit higher than some of your competitors? Yeah, well, first of all, I'd like to say that, you know, in terms of the management fee per se, the management fee that we that, that we charge, it's pretty comparable to, uh, you know, other management fees for covered call mandates in the marketplace. Um, and all our management fees are 65, uh, you know, basis points, 0.65%. So in terms of the MER, there's other fixed costs that go into that, and that kind of increase that number. Uh, there's, there's tax, there's fixed costs in terms of running the fund. So what happens is with smaller funds, you, you tend to have a, a bit of a, a bit of a higher um, MER, but as the fund grows, you know that that uh, you know that gap gets narrow, and all funds are different. We have plenty of funds in our lineup where the MERs are are, are smaller compared to the competition. These ones are a little bit higher, but you know it's a very very small difference. And I think in terms of overall performance, it's not going to make a big difference. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I always tell people look at the total returns, the total performance, because that is all net of fees. Right. So that that's definitely more of an indicator, a lot more important than just seeing a, a 10 or 15 dif percent this uh, percentage di uh, difference in the management fee. So, yeah, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Um, last question I have. So I'm obviously, you know, I have OCD. I need to know what's going on in the income world in Canada in terms of covered call ETFs. And 2022, I have to say, uh, and I spoke to many fund managers who, who agree with me, has been a pretty blockbuster year for income oriented covered call strategies in Canada. Uh, Canada has a huge market, even more popular than the US in terms of covered calls. And one of my favorite style of products is these all-in-one, I call them all-in-one covered call solutions, where either the manager takes all their own covered call ETFs, combines them, and then adds a little bit of leverage on top. Or there's another manager who is you know, uh, not necessarily a covered call expert, but they grab multiple covered call ETFs from different managers and then adds 25% leverage. So do you guys intend or see in the future, and I know, I know you can never talk about you know, future products and what's in the pipeline, but are you considering something similar for Horizons, a, a, an all-in-one Horizons covered call solution, for, for example? Yeah, that, that's something that you know we're we're you know looking into. Um, it's not something that is uh, definitely you know in the works uh, as of, as of now. But you know the, the way we structured our existing cover call lineup with kind of three broad based indices: Canada, U.S. Uh, and and technology, yeah. and then kind of three sector 
uh, offerings with gold stocks, energy stocks, which and gold stocks, and energy stocks, I think in the inflationary environment that we find ourselves, you know, I think should do pretty well over the years. But and then we have the banks, uh, you know, with with BKCC. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, we have HGY. So for, for investors who have certain views on the market, this, this is a way that you can pick and choose what exposures you have in your portfolio and what you want to replace with cover call. So I think that fits a lot of the needs out there. Um, but yeah, I, these these products, these all-in-one products have done very, very well. And we're happy when these products do well, because that means that, you know, uh, cover calls uh, are getting a lot of interest. So um, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, it's the bread and butter of my personal strategy. And, um, you know, one question I maybe I forgot to ask you, though we talked about cover call strategy. What about stock selection? What are, are you guys more of an active uh, stock picking manager to go because that's always what really matters, you know, with these ETF and, and even you know cover call ETF. You're really investing still in the in the basket of stocks. You're just getting a little bit more defense, lower volatility, higher yield with a cover call. So how do you go, uh, guys, go about um, picking the stocks? Is it an active approach or is it a passive approach where you say, you know what, let's just take these twenty stocks, best Canadian stocks. This is these are what we like. Let's just leave those. Or are you always looking? Yeah, well, here at Rises, we're definitely an options uh, specialists. I have uh, I have a Waterloo math degree. I've been I've been trading options for for over 25 years. Uh, you know my my colleagues here also have been in the market trading options for you know for for as long as I have. We have a lot of options expertise, and so you know we made the decision we're going to focus our our knowledge and active uh, you know uh, portfolio management on the on the overlay on the options. We're going to leave the underlying as kind of a passive basket. Uh, you know whether it's the 60, okay. whether it's the Nasdaq 100. Um, we're going to leave the underlying uh, to be a passive uh, underlying index. Okay. Yeah. Pretty, pretty typical actually. And uh, it makes the most sense because the way I usually say it, that there's only so many amazing, great companies out there, right? It's, it's typically always the same ones, no matter which provider or, you know, like you said, the, the TSX 60 or the, the, the NASDAQ, et cetera, et cetera. So it makes complete sense to me. So uh, Nick, it was a pleasure speaking with you. I, um, you know, I, I like the Horizons products. I'm always looking at new covered call ETFs and strategies. I'm especially attracted to the QQCC one. Very, very unique. A great option for us Canadians who like that QILD but don't want to go through the problems. Even the gold one, very cool and unique. You have a gold producers one and then you have more of the classic ones like the banks and uh, US one, Canadian one. And you even have an energy one too, an oil and gas one, which is pretty interesting for people who, you know, want to kind of capitalize on the sector which has been doing fairly well recently, but a little bit less, uh, a little bit more defense with those covered calls. So thank you, thanks again for coming on. Hopefully you'll come on again and uh, uh, good luck. Talk soon. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, I'd love to come back. Great. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, that like button, and make sure you're subscribed not to miss out on my future content. Of course, hit that little bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified for any new content that comes out. Also, make sure to visit our website, passiveincomeinvesting.ca. That's where you could purchase my digital product, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package, which is on version 4 right now. It comes with lifetime updates, so you only have to buy it once, which is awesome. So this is a companion tool. It's a reference tool that will help you build your own portfolio according to your needs and goals. And it covers both the Canadian and American and U.S. stock markets. So make sure to check it out. I have a video explaining from A to Z exactly what the product is. I showcase it. So there's no surprises. If you're interested, make sure to check out that video. Also right there on my website on the homepage, I do offer a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me so this is a one hour zoom call with yours truly for a, you know in case you need personalized help i'll answer all your questions and i'll help you best i can just remember i'm not a licensed financial planner or financial advisor this, these are just going to be a uh, friendly uh, conversation right it's just going to be my opinions but if ever you're looking for that personalized touch that personalized help you could book a one-on-one -on -one with me make sure to check out the message on top of that calendar uh, that will give you a status of my bookings uh, for that month also, we do have a Facebook group, great Facebook group, over 12,000 members. So make sure to join our community. The group is called Passive Income Investing, a nice Facebook group where everyone is sharing their thoughts and opinions and sharing their experiences. So it's a really nice group. We make sure to stay on top of the scam and the spams and we delete those right away. So make sure to join our Facebook group. If ever you want something more personalized with us, you could uh, follow us on Instagram. That's where we post more personal things on our adventures here in Panama. So follow us on Instagram if you want. 
And how do I always leave you? Continue to stay safe, continue to stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time. Yeah.